Hey. Oh, yeah, we haven't done that one. Hey, that's because we we haven't done a show in a while. I'm like, how did this start? <laughs> you it's, almost forgot to say hey. Hey, it's episode... 89. 89. Alex, Alex and Jim. Jim. Analyze. Billy, Billy Joel. Hairstyles? Hairstyles, yeah. <laughs> I... If for real, if we want to start a second show, it's a short show. It's about eight or nine episodes. Every era of that hair, I wouldn't mind doing that show. Yeah, there's some stuff to work with. That's legitimately there's a that's a show where we get right to the topic. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No time for fucking around. They're <laughs> like, all right, we're it's we're talking about mullet today. <laughs> we're talking about. Hit, or what would you say, like early Danny Zuko hair? He's got his Danny <laughs> Zuko hair. Yep. Then to the, the real uh, top heavy Jew fro. Jew fro for sure. 1980. And then current, of course, is a lot of like a hairstyle best described as no longer interested. Yep. <laughs> yep. Too much has passed. Yeah, this is what it is. But yeah, we were on episode 89. And uh, well, first, right away. And then I'll get into the important part of talking about things that aren't about the show. But I don't, I like this song. Yeah, it's nice. And I found so much of it actually kind of surprising. Uh, It's weird when you actually listen to a song with the intent to analyze it and then you go oh i didn't notice this thing before sure is it an irish or a scottish thing he's doing it's irish right uh it sounds irish yeah it's a a lilt it's a almost uh it's an irish ditty it's a bit of an irish ditty yeah it's uh with the the hopeful kind though not the dirgy kind Uh, yes absolutely it's a very hopeful song for him. Yeah. Especially. I uh, I love the ending so much. Lovely. Yeah. I love the ending so much. And, and it snuck up on me because I hadn't thought about it. And then I listened to it and I was like, damn, there's this nice little proper musical uh, finish that seems to dis- which is distinct from the song itself it isn't yeah. just a continuation of the tune we've been hearing but fits perfectly it's a well written tune yeah it's a nice little uh, coda is that a coda would you call it yeah yeah all right i'd call it that i don't care what anybody else calls it yeah i'd call it yeah. that i'm not interested in the definition of the word yeah if you don't want to call it a coda well to hell with you this is an Irish coda here. Yeah. <laughs> if you're drinking in this bar, it's a coda. It's a coda here. And since it's Irish, I can definitely get mad for no reason. Oh, absolutely. So that's a coda. Okay. Shut your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I and love then, Massive yeah. fight. You know what's funny? I wrote down the same thing you just said. I wrote down optimistic. So it's like, it is that. It's very almost jarring given what we know yeah it's always worth noting when he's not in a bad mood do Um, you think do you think that that's just by the time he got here to this album that's who he is and it kind of feels like it is and a lot of times we're we're analyzing and it's fair who he was Sure. Yeah. Well, they're all little snapshots in time, I guess. Yeah. In this one, he's, you know, looking back on a very full career. Yeah. Um, and looking forward. And it was right around the new millennium. Yeah. Hence 2000 years, I think. He was looking forward to the next. Yeah. Uh, he said, <laughs> I did see a little snippet from an interview where he was talking about this song and saying like, oh, you know, we're everybody was kind of hopeful about the new millennium. And then the new millennium comes and boom, 9-11. 
<laughs> really made me laugh more than 11 usually does. Uh, that, I love it. He's like, first thing that happens in a new millennium. You know what's great about that, too? That's the right kind of joke because yeah. there's nobody being victimized. It's more just that's <laughs> that's an Irish joke. Yeah. That's, man, man, life is stupid. <laughs> that's an Irish joke or a Jewish joke, really. It's yeah. oh, Lord. Any properly developed culture. That is so great. This shit is stupid. Yep. There's a very old Irish, a very old Jewish joke that I like is, which is, uh, you know, the Jews are the chosen people, uh, to which they immediately said to God, "Why us?" Great. I like that a lot. It's um, great. I love that, and I love that there is a, a, I think more than one now, Jewish hockey team that calls themselves the Frozen Chosen. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Uh, I want to talk about something briefly political, and it's nothing. You get contribute what you want. I just got to say, it's funny to me to watch Jamie Raskin because uh. he, I don't know how Republicans don't understand that they need to do at least a little homework. Yeah. He is always so prepared. And AOC, Lord, that girl's got your number. She's super prepared, too. Yeah. Our pretty representative is also smart, you idiots. The way the way it's always been. And she's prettier. Ha ha. Yeah, the, it is crazy to not even prepare. You know, obviously, everything they're bringing is horse shit. But to not even organize your horse shit properly. Yeah. Knowing, yeah, knowing you're coming up to uh, Jamie Raskin on television, yeah, where everyone can see you. She did something today that was so great. AOC did, which is she said, "I'd like to submit it for the record the uh, this actual piece of evidence." Now, the one they talked about was edited to completely change the meaning, which they're allowed to do by the rules of whatever the rules of speechifying. I can't think of the word, but uh -huh. she said. Of course, not something that they would have done under oath. This is the one from under oath. And it, and of course, it is completely changes the context because they got nothing. Personally, I hope this continues because By all means. there's, I, I hope they manage. I hope, I mean, Democrats should be like, listen, you need to do this impeachment. So let's get things funded so you can keep impeaching. Right. Do your thing. Yes, stay on TV. Continue demonstrating your your mastery of the facts. Yeah, <laughs> just and we'll get people paid. Yeah, do that. Uh, and then I wanted to ask you this, and then it's your turn. Drew Barrymore. <laughs> yeah, I like Drew Barrymore in general. I I don't expect a lot from her. She had a love a rougher of lives. She's lives in a bubble. She seems sure. she seems reasonably smart but naive. Yep. She did this thing and then immediately corrected herself. Yeah. Which is great. Some people have speculated. Do you think the fact that Drew Barrymore and Bill Maher and whoever else immediately backtracked created the daylight for them to go, oh, I think we're gonna have to actually give something to the writers? And not, I don't think we're going to break up. Um, I think it was fully coincidental timing wise. Okay. I don't think it was a factor. Okay. Um, I don't necessarily have all the knowledge you'd need to make that call, but yeah, I think it's just a timing thing. Okay. It worked out that way because I don't think those shows coming back would have saved anybody. <laughs> yeah. Would not have saved studios from the hole they dug. I yeah. think the very more especially was out to save her reputation. Uh, and rightly so, she did the right thing. Yeah. Just took longer than it should have. Because, you know, she's not in a room with writers. She's in a room with execs. Yeah. And the execs were like, yeah, you can come. Legally, she could. Yeah. She wouldn't have been violating anything, really. Um, except her WGA writers couldn't have worked. 
but she only has two writers on that show. Yeah. Who uh, joined the picket line <laughs> uh, the day she tried to go on. Oh, uh, but, okay. You know, I think like it was poorly explained to her, I'm sure, by an executive. And then she was like, okay, I'll go on. Yeah. And then she immediately was like, why is everybody yelling at me? Yeah. As for Bill Maher, I, who cares? Yeah. Whatever happened to him is fine. Yeah. I uh, I texted him. <laughs> what? I, 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 I added him on Twitter. Yeah. And That's I different. said he's coming back. And I said, I, I have an idea for the next new rules. You know, because he does the new rules. You know, and he loves the my new idea. rules. Here's my idea for new rules. Go fuck yourself. Yeah. I don't like <laughs> him. I never have. No. I do think he used to be a good comic, but he's not even that now. He no, just he's a terrible terrible. comic. He's so lazy. Yeah. Um well, the only thing I ever give him is he runs a panel pretty well. Yeah. He's good at a panel. And that's all that show should be. If it even should be on anymore, I don't know. I feel like it's been too long now. Yeah, I nobody think... knows when to stop. Is a thing we're learning about our society. Yeah, yeah. Just stop. No, take a. Why doesn't anybody retire? <laughs> I... Retirement sounds fucking great. Yeah, I, I kind of again, Craig Ferguson. Yeah, that's how you do it. Craig Ferguson was like, this is fun. All done. Yep. It was like, nobody knew who he was. And then slowly they found out and they loved him very much. And then he was like, okay. Yep. I'm good. I think it's European. I think so too. Yeah. Europeans are really told like, hey, retire. (laughs) Retirement's great. And what he did is he went on to do stand up sporadically. Yep. Do you like his stand up? I haven't seen a ton of it. I know he's a very funny guy, so I would love it. Very funny guy. I don't necessarily love his stand-up. I know I would love it, though, if I... I feel like his stand-up is like hockey. To bring up hockey again, but... (laughs) I would enjoy his stand-up live, but not so much on TV. Okay. Because the dynamic of the... Because he does a lot of improvisation. Yeah. And I don't really enjoy that on TV so much usually. Yeah, I get that. I'm keenly aware of the air between jokes when you're improv- improvising. Improv- improvising, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, yeah, Europeans doing stand-up is always a crapshoot. Yeah, they're very comfortable with silence and long, long stretches between laughs. Um, and sometimes that's nice and it works, and sometimes it's very uncomfortable for an American audience. Yep. Yeah. That's not cool. um, I have a terrible cold. Do we mention that yet? Not yet. Well, I have a terrible cold, and it's my first cold in like three years, because unless you count the one I had three weeks ago. I had a miserable, <laughs> I had one of those where it's just coughing. Ah, fantastic. So no sleeping. You're like, What's happening? And it's, it's some version of a cold, but that's the only thing. I coughed for two weeks and then it stopped. Yeah. And then I'm fine for three weeks. And then yesterday I got very sick. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. And it's just those miserable kinds, you know. Yeah. So I'm doing the cough syrups and the Zycams and all the things. Ugh, it fucking stinks. It's... <laughs> Yeah, and it's coming on the heel. I'm just gonna do medical whining for a little bit. I love it. I'm in. <laughs> so that's what happened in the last few days. Two weeks ago, I went in for a cardiac ablation, which is a thing you do when you have an irregular heartbeat. Which it turns out I kind of did. Whoa! An irregular heartbeat and bouts of AFib which I had thought for years were panic attacks. Um, They apparently were not panic attacks. My heart gets out of rhythm, heart rate skyrockets, get very like tired, dizzy, freaked out, obviously. 
Yeah. And that can last for an hour or it can last for 12 hours. Oh, uh, so back in May, I had a bout that lasted like 12 hours. I went to the ER, they pumped me full of meds, and they diagnosed me with AFib. And so I went to this doctor down here. It was like, we're going to do an ablation. So they stick a wire inside your femoral vein right next to your doink. And they go all the way up through your various things into your heart with this wire, which then maps the electrical field of your atrium to see what's firing improperly. And then they burn it. Oh. Zap it like a mole on the inside of your heart. <laughs> and it sounds horrifying. Really not that much of a procedure. They're like, it's fine. We've done a million of these. Nobody dies. You're going to feel weird for a couple of weeks and then no more AFib. So hey. I'm at like the two week point now um, where crazy bruising <laughs> on the groins and um, still occasional palpitations, which they said would happen. They're like, you'll have this for a little while, but for different reasons now. Now it's because you're growing scar tissue. Um, but apparently this shit works and then you don't have it anymore. Wow. Right? So that's what I've been up to is getting over that. So you've had this forever. I've had this for many years and didn't know what it was and then it finally got diagnosed and treated yeah so um hopefully once the it takes three months to completely heal from it but they were like after a couple of weeks you should be mostly good to go uh, and you can get back to business have uh, we talked about the condition i have that was undiagnosed is that the one where you passed out in the restaurant <laughs> do you remember that Remind you were me. with Mary Jo, and then you were on the floor all of a sudden. Oh, my basal vagus syncope. Yeah, that one. Yeah. That's no. Not that. no. No. What? Which one? So, um, it is a comp. It is a condition named after. Um, oh, who is the girl who sh shrinks down really tiny and then gets really big and mushrooms and? Oh uh, yeah, Alice. Yes, it's called Alice in Wonderland syndrome. And I never knew what it was, and we finally figured it out. When I was a kid, um, when I when I was a kid, there was a, like a week and a half where my parents were really nice to me, and then I went in and got uh, an MRI, mm -hmm. and we have subsequently figured out, oh, they thought you had cancer. <laughs> oh wow! So everyone was nice to me, and then no cancer is like, all right, back to business. Uh, <laughs> So um, what had happened is what would happen is when I was at school or it happened at school more than anywhere else, but it could happen other places. The room would change size and Whoa. people's voices would either speed up or slow down, usually speed up. Wow. And, and one time it was so bad that I had to hold on to my chair and I told my teacher, my teacher's doing some lesson and I go, shut up shut up you've got to shut up and i tell my teacher to shut up because like she's just got it i got to get her to stop talking because right the cranking of their it's it's like if somebody took your voice and went <laughs> oh, and, man. Uh, and that would happen every now and then and then in my 20s every now and then i would get out of bed and i would look around and i would think Am I a foot taller? Wow. And I'd have this feeling that I was taller than I had been the night before. And so it's called Alice in Wonderland syndrome. And it happens mostly to kids. And then eventually it usually goes away. And here's what it's usually caused by. It's usually caused by head trauma. Okay. Or severe flu. Both of which I had as a kid. No, oh, great. Because one wow. time I was walking home from school and a wall fell on me. <laughs> what? Yeah. 
So a little kid walking along, there's this wall, just goes. Wow. I put my, I put my hand on my head and I was like, because I didn't hurt. And then I looked at my hand covered in blood. Ah, yeah. Run home. <laughs> Stitches. Wow. But oh, um, never heard of this. Neither had I. Wow. Tends to go undiagnosed less now because people know what it is. <laughs> yeah, that helps. No wild. When did it get diagnosed? Uh weeks ago talked to a doctor said I bet that's what this was. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. Not wild. It's wild. Yeah. And you oh. had this heart thing that you thought was anxiety. When did when was the first one? Hard to say. Right. That's the thing. It's hard to track. Because maybe I did have some real panic attacks. Hard to say for sure. Yeah. I'd say probably about five years ago is when it started happening. When I started having these, I would eat. And, you know, sometimes you swallow a bite that's too big yeah. and it hurts your chest. Yeah. Well, I, to me, the sensation was this food is stuck here now. And I'm going to freak out <laughs> because it's not going into my stomach. So I would have, I would start freaking out about that and then walk around the apartment until I got lightheaded. And then I would often go to the nearby emergency room and stand out in front. Cause I'm like, if I go in, then they're going to run all the tests. But if this is nothing, I'm wasting time and money. So I would walk around out front of the ER until I felt better. And then I would go home. <laughs> <laughs> but also what can happen when you swallow way too much food your esophagus is right on top of your heart and it can trigger AFib Lisa. something like that uh, too much caffeine too much booze all these things are triggers not enough sleep so the same things you think are giving you a panic attack can give you AFib Dude. So I spent a couple, I actually did go to that ER a couple of times, spent the night, they were like, nothing's wrong with you. <laughs> go home, you weirdo. And then in May, I was upstate partying with some friends, way too much booze, food, everything else. And I woke up at 3 a.m. and my heart rate was 150 and it wouldn't slow down. <laughs> Wow. And it went on for hours and hours and hours. And I finally was like, we you got to take me to an ER. Yeah. And we went to this ER and they ran all the tests. And they were like, oh, yeah, you're in AFib right now. Wow. And take all these beta blockers and stuff and stay here and calm down. And it was eight hours there. And they let me go. And they're like, yeah, you have AFib and you probably not the first time. They're like, have you had this before? And I was like, no, wait. Yes, I think. <laughs> Dude, that's wow, wow. Um, I don't... I, so a very good friend of mine, my friend Brian, he just had uh -huh. to, he just had to have surgery as well. Uh similar similar area, I guess, and similar okay. problem to you, but not heart. He had to have they mess his 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 he had a swallowing issue that you said triggered okay. and he had to have a surgery because his esophagus part of it was just going the wrong direction or something oh yes i've heard of this yeah that thing which is a fistula maybe may, maybe um yeah he was having like it got his got to the point where he just couldn't eat okay i guess i can't eat spicy foods oh i guess i can't eat not spicy foods <laughs> you're right yeah you know, so he had to have surgery and and the irritating thing for him was the way doctors are is they're like let's try this medicine first like a year ago he's like right. just do the surgery well we want to try the medicine first so you go on medicine for six months and they're like yeah we probably should do the surgery and you're like yeah okay Could right. have the surgery a year ago yeah, um, I was kind of happy when I went to see this cardiologist and he was like, you have AFib. Um, we're going to do the ablation. Good. Yeah. Aren't there pills for this? He's like, yeah, but they don't really work. 
like, okay, I guess we're doing it. That's great. So that's a that's a good doctor. That's yeah. Let's get yeah. This, let's get this shit done. Why are we why are we dicking around? You know, of which, what song are we doing? Oh, right, you're right, right. Um, <laughs> we're doing the song Two Thousand Years" by Mr. Two Thousand Years." Yep, not three thousand years, which I thought for a while. <laughs> which is good because it would that episode have been way too long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just we had to tell two more health stories. <laughs> yeah, I got them. Don't worry. Oh no! Yeah, I'm here for you. Locked and loaded whenever we need them. Hell yeah, baby. And if we talked about that and we were we could have just as many episodes. We should think about it. And I never get off topic. <laughs> I'd me- get a ring back for that shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, two thousand years, and as we said before, uh it feels like an Irish song. Yeah. And uh it's pandemic. Yeah. Hopeful. Yeah. It's nice. Lovely it's, lyric shape. Perfect. Perfectly good. Yeah, perfect lyric shape. Um yeah. I it, it's it's such a nice little song, and it's such a good testament to the fact that this last album of his has a lot to offer it it's a nice song it does feel like thinking about it musically that this is a man who's a little bit done with rock and roll <laughs> yeah and he doesn't and and to his great credit he doesn't do the sting thing which is make you listen to like uh 12 jazz albums <laughs> Yes. I'm just fine. one Irish song and I'll see you guys later. Yeah, and I'm out, kids. I'm gonna go be happy with my seen, wife. Oh no. Have I'm, you ever seen Sting in concert? Huh? Have you ever seen Sting in concert? Yes, sir. Did you feel like you knew most of what he was doing, or was it a lot of it mysterious to you or familiar? So I oh, went, so I went to see Sting during the I want to say Dream of the Blue Turtles tour. Okay. Yep. And I loved every part of it. It was long, very much like Billy Joel. He loves to actually play. So you're getting a full concert. Great. He ended with uh, one of my favorite songs that he rarely would ever play in concert and he just happened to play it. He ended with murder by numbers. Oh, great. I love murder by numbers. It's fantastic. He told a funny story about Billy Graham. He said that when (laughs) the song came out, Billy Graham made a statement that this song was written by the devil. Huh? He said, it's not true. I wrote the fucking song. (laughs) Right. Hilarious. (laughs) Hilarious. <laughs> and uh and it was a nice, it felt very police. And this is because and in the sense that he did something super stripped down at the end with doing murder by numbers. There wasn't any nonsense. It was wasn't like he was like, I'm gonna do murder by numbers, but this time with a mandolin. And you're like, oh come on. <laughs> come on, man. Yeah. Do the song. Uh, so I knew every song, um, but at the time, I was very into the police and I was very into Sting, so I would. Even if he had done a deep cut, um, he did, it might have been later because he did do Englishman in New York, which I love that song as well. Great. Um, All right. your experience? I have not seen Sting. Oh, okay. But I have had the experience of going to see an artist that I thought I knew pretty well. And then not knowing a lot of the songs. Who, who'd you go see? Um, that happened to me. This one's my fault, mostly. Bruce Springsteen. We went to see. And it was a full hour and a half before I recognized the song. And I know a good, like, I know his hits. Yeah. Um, but he's, you know, he's playing here. He's got to do fan service. 
these people know his work inside and out. So he's got to do like, oh, this is a deep cut from my first album. And I'm, he never said anything. <laughs> also, he just played the songs. Yeah. One after another. And I was like, what are these? Soon, <laughs> everything he was doing. That's right. uh, then we went to see Jackson Brown. And he is very much trying to sell his most recent album. And that was not good. Yeah. He was lovely. And, you know, a lot of the songs were like, oh, this is probably good, but I don't know it. I want to hear the ones I know. Yeah. And it, there was not much room for that. Yeah. Um, so I like it, you know, tickets are expensive. I like to get what I want. And uh, Billy Joel is a great experience for that. Absolutely. Bare Naked Ladies, by the way, are for sure a good experience like that. You're going to get the hits for sure. Yep. Yet if I had if I had a million dollars, you're going to get um, all of it. Fantastic. Yeah, that's uh, it's nice that way. It's um, but yeah, Bruce Springsteen too is just. I don't know. See, he you want to have seen him, if you happen to have gone to see him right after you know Born in the USA came out, you'd have loved everything. Right because he's playing that top to bottom, but we're so many years past that. Yeah. And I think he's not, you know, it's not his favorite album of his. Yeah. <laughs> by any means. Yeah. Um, I think he might've played two songs from that. See, I think he's the opposite of what you're, I think he's the opposite in the way that I don't think he does a lot of fan service because I think he does a lot of Bruce Springsteen service. <laughs> Very good chance. Like I, I went and saw Diana Kroll in concert. You know the Diana Kroll, right? Sure, great. What a great show! And it made no difference that I was there or anyone else was there. I don't know uh, if she ever looked at the audience and we <laughs> need her to. Yeah, she's such a musician in the purest sense of the word. Great. She's a performer in as much as you enjoy what she's doing. Yeah, but not so much an interactor. No. Which is and fine. I, I don't, you don't have to tell me why you wrote this song. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And she didn't write her songs because that's not what she is. She's a jazz musician. She's like, here's, you know, 40 standards. We all know this is how I do them. <laughs> so, Great. All right. See, we tried to stay on track. It did not happen. It almost worked. We started right. talking about music at least. Yeah. 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 We're getting closer, guys. Getting closer. Circling in. I think next episode we'll get to the song. Uh, the song is 2,000 Years. Uh, why don't I start? But first, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Look at the shape of the lyrics. Do we do it? Uh, do we alternate? Or do both of us read two? Because the way it's written is you've got one and one that completes the thought and one and one that completes... You know, we got to alternate because there's only three. Okay. All right. Let's I get it. You see what I'm saying, though, right? I see what you're saying, bro. Okay. I think I'll start. I Or, uh, yeah, I'll start. That's fine. You start. In the beginning, there was the cold and the night. Prophets and angels gave us the fire and the light. I like it. Mm-hmm. It man was triumphant, armed with the faith and the will that even the darkest ages couldn't kill. I like that lyric a lot. Very nice. It's um, yeah. he's literally just like here is early human history. Yeah, it was these things. Yeah, and I like. like I like com combining faith with will. So it's not strictly a religious thing in a, necessarily in a God sense. Although so there, there's definitely a little bit of that, but there's also faith that things can get better. Yeah. Faith without works. Is uh, forget the rest of that. Yeah. <laughs> it is pointless. I think something like that. Uh, Faith without works is some, yeah, yeah, and then works without faith is dead, right? Me, me. I think. Yeah. 
write in, send us a postcard. Yeah. Complete the quote. <laughs> too many kingdoms. Too many flags on the field. So many battles. So many wounds to be healed. Time is relentless. Only true love perseveres. It's been a long time, and now I'm with you. After 2,000 years. Oh, that's nice. I like it a lot. It's a little, is it a love song? I'm with you? I think it is. Although, or is it, you know, I'm, I'm imagining him playing it in concert and singing that. And it, the implication would be like, oh, it's been 2,000 years of human history that all led to me being here with this audience tonight. Hi, yeah. A nice thought, if a little hokey. I like the phrase, time is relentless. Yeah. I like it a lot. I don't, I, I yeah, do I not... think we were just talking about the relentlessness of time. Yeah. <laughs> Lord, Yeah. Lord, yeah, dog. I love too many kingdoms, too many flags on the field. That is a good assessment of humanity. Yes. A nice, uh, in so few words. Yeah. Nothing makes me happier than giant thoughts distilled down to a sentence or two. Yeah, there's this uh, book. Uh, I'll get the quote, the title later, because it's a good book about the history of British kings. And one of the things it talks about in the early kingdoms is that so many of them weren't even proper kingdom. It's it's just, we call them kingdoms now, but it was just these idiots coalesced over here, these idiots coalesced over here, and everybody fought. Right. And <laughs> yeah. people are jerks. Or like roving bands of idiots. Yeah, who organized under this flag. So they're like, no, 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 we're the real deal. And uh, <laughs> and and the, the con of the king, which is in the beginning... In the beginning, the king knows that it's a con. This is an interesting point he made. In the beginning, the king knows it's a con. He knows he's not endowed by God. Real. Right. But generations later, they're pretty sure it's not a con. And that's how it works. Yeah. Yeah. You believe your own hype. Yeah. This is our moment here at the crossroads of time. Year 2000. We hope our yeah. children carry our dreams down the line. They are the vintage. What kind of life will they live? Is this a curse or a blessing that we give? I like that. Very nice. I like they are the vintage. Me too. Can That's I, very hot writing. Let me point out too, very untraditionally Billy Joel, he's, the whatever blame that he's assessing is pointed at his generation he's not telling yeah. the children what they should have to do yeah he's, he's like, like oh i wonder if it's even a good idea that we brought these kids into the world yeah did we do right by these kids i like that i have no objections to these lyrics at all no really nice it's a little it's like a, a little highfalutin lyrically for him yep but it uh appropriately so yeah he's accomplishing it so it's not one of those where you're like oh, he's trying to talk french or whatever this is no they i mean they are the vintage is so nice um, you know what's really cool too they are the vintage isn't followed by the grapes on the vine he doesn't yeah. he doesn't <laughs> overload the which would yeah. ruin it it's they're yeah. the vintage you get it, yep. right? Yep. He didn't do, yeah, three more wine bits. Yep. <laughs> Just on to the next. I like that. Sometimes I wonder, why are we so blind to fate? Without compassion, there can be no end to hate. No end to sorrow caused by the same endless fears why can't we learn from all we've been through after 2,000 years? Less good. Yeah. I like uh, the uh, 
overkill on end, end to hate, no end to sorrow, caused by the same endless fears. It's a good thought, less, it's a little clunkier, I think. Yeah, uh, I don't hate it, but yeah. It almost feels like if if you were going to critique, it almost feels like this should have been earlier. <laughs> yeah. Because it seems like we got, we were a little hope, more hopeful and there's just a little... But I, again, I do like the acknowledgement that we've been trash. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. I don't know what fate has to do with it. It's more about, I think, without compassion, there can be no end to hate, is the thesis. Yeah. So I don't, like, fate just rhymes. <laughs> I agree. Fate doesn't really fit because fate is something else because... Everything else is under our control here. Right. Why are we so blind to fate? That would be in a song more about that you, it's good right. no matter what. Right. The whole point seems to be that we can control our destiny as humans. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. That's That may be the single thing that jumped out at me too, as far as where the clunkiness here lives, is just yeah. mainly that. Mainly there, that. Yeah. There will be miracles after the last war is won. Science and poetry rule in the new world to come. I like that. I I like equating poetry with science. Yep. As far as its value. Yep. It harkens back to faith and the will. Yeah. Prophets and angels gave us the power to see. What an amazing future there will be. That's nice. It's it's uh, <laughs> it is it is nothing wrong with it. I do like I like prophets and angels. What an amazing future there will be. I don't know if you've ever had this thought, but there's so many songs that talk about a potential amazing future. Yeah, I don't mind it. I don't really mind it at all. It's just sometimes I, I'll get sad in a song that's meant to be hopeful when I'll realize like, oh, the song was written in the 40s. And still, <laughs> hasn't gotten, still hasn't gotten better. <laughs> oh, and it's a uh, future is starting to look pretty dim. Yeah, it's man. in a lot of ways. So that'll bum me out in the sense of like, because you figure this comes out in the 80s or 90s or whatever. And you're like, eh, still not uh, still not here. <laughs> Uh, yeah well maybe uh maybe soon yeah <laughs> but yeah i mean i like acknowledging the millennium and okay. sort of trying to sum up your you know it's weird to be in the early part of a new millennium <laughs> where there isn't a marker coming yeah not for yeah. a while yeah not for a while we're sort of drifting now yeah as far as meaningless milestones and in the evening, after the fire and the light, one thing is certain, nothing can hold back the night. Love that. That's very good. It's very it's the old Billy Joel sneaking in to be <laughs> pessimistic again. Time is relentless, and as the past disappears, we're on the verge of all things new. We are 2,000 years. Oh, that's neat. I like that phrase. That's really cool. Yeah, I like that. We are two um, years. I like saying we're on the verge of all things new. It's very neutral. Yeah. We're on the verge of a fantastic future. It's smooth sailing from here. Or, you know, not apocalyptic. It's just new. It's just going to be new. It's whatever it is. Yeah. It's whatever it is. But uh, here we are. You know, and you... I like what you said because I like the, yeah, because old Billy Joel's still there. Yeah. Classic Billy Joel, who's a little bit not sure that anything's good <laughs> and fed up with a lot of people. Cause there's even still, you know, the, the, we didn't start the fire thesis, which is this shit's just going to keep going. Yeah. Well, that's true. There's a lot of parallels. That's good. But with better lyrics, of course, more and less, yeah, 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 probably doesn't do this live, which is a shame because this is a good little song. Yeah, it really is. 
I bet you're right. I bet he doesn't play it much. I've never heard it. No, and I guess why would you? Because this is that last album, and people really like the one song that you don't. <laughs> the one. Yeah. Um, yeah, <laughs> these are nice lyrics. And again, everybody, if you're a longtime listener of our show, first, thank you. Uh, but also, if you know me, I love an ending. I love a proper ending. Uh-huh. This is the most, this is such a complete song. Yeah. It uh, may have gotten short shrift. Yeah. Don't, it wasn't a hit for sure. There's no bridge either, by the way, and it doesn't need one. No, it doesn't need one. It just kind of chugs. Doesn't that jump out at you now? Think about this. No bridge, but you don't feel like it got repetitive. And you don't feel like it ended too soon or too late or just here's here's what I'm thinking. And then he tells you what he's thinking. And then that musically very interesting ending. Oh, almost forgot to say, I love the drum. Yeah, beautiful. What an interesting drum. Irish drum? That's what it sounds like. It's not a rock and roll drum. Yeah. It does. It could be. Oh, I want to listen to it again now. Yeah. If it's an Irish drum. I heard a lot of that when we were in Ireland some months ago. Rad. Irish drumming in pubs. Yeah, it's great. There's pretty sound. It's very interesting to hear a song by a rock artist when they introduce a thing like a, like a drum that just isn't the like keeping yeah, yeah. <laughs> from the kit yeah they do this other different thing every like i think you know this i love leslie gore you know that about me right yeah i love leslie gore and every now and then i'm struck by how her songs so much of the drumming sounds like drumming you'd hear in like the 30s or 40s like the the beat it's keeping is very much or you'd hear at a high school. It's just not necessarily good per se, but it's yeah. kind of interesting. Like there's this song where I a match to catch is the name of the song. It, it took a match to catch my baby doing me wrong. And it's about how the lights went out at the hop and she lights a match. <laughs> she lights a wow. match. And that's where she sees her her baby kissing someone else. Wow. But the drum in that goes. <sighs> And I'm like, it almost sounds like a military drum. Why is that there? <laughs> wow. It's not bad. I like it because I like Leslie Gore, but. I don't want to hear that. Uh, it's called A Match to Catch. I think you'd enjoy it. It's real cheesy. It's great. Right. Fantastic. I mean, that was the time. That was the I era for it. I'll share you my favorite lyric. Um, my baby came back to my side. He said he went for a soda. I said, honey, I know you lied. <laughs> and I can't help but laugh when she says soda. <laughs> like, he <laughs> said he went for a soda. <laughs> it's such a goofy song mm-hmm. about boys from a girl who couldn't be remotely interested in boys. <laughs> Fantastic. I love <laughs> that song. All right, I, I could talk to you forever, and that's not a joke, but I know you had a cold, so... Let's do our business, and then we can talk. We can talk as long as you want. I just don't want to hurt you. Um, yeah, I appreciate that. Ah, look at that. Uh, penguins. That's right. It's his song, Penguins. <laughs> it's classic. Is it two thousand penguins? <laughs> <laughs> probably way more. <clears throat> it's probably way more. Now uh, let me. So I'll give you. A, it's either an incredibly easy clue because you'll get what I was thinking or Uh it's painfully difficult. Because I won't know what you're thinking. But it's like if if the same idea pops in your head where you're like, but I'll give you a really good hint, which is what is it they say about all these creatures that's really obvious in this picture? They uh, like to hang out together. Well, that's true. But what? What? Else, what they do look they like say? Tuxedos, huh? They look like they're wearing tuxedos. True, and 
Could you tell one from another? No, they're all very much alike. Yeah. Yeah. That's they all, look, they all look the same to me from his famous uh, uh song about Asians. They're all the same. They're all the same. You're almost there. Like why can't I get it? You're so close. They're it, all alike. They're all the same. They're, they're all the same. the same. Yeah. It must be the cold meds. That's okay. Um, I'm going to let you off the hook, but I think you'll love it. It's pressure. What? You're Wait all the same. You're all the same. <laughs> I, like I said, it was either a terrible clue or a great clue. And it might not be the cold. It might just be an awful clue. But it felt good to me. <laughs> it was a perfect storm of uh, a, a hard clue and my dead brain. Yeah, it's it's very funny because I'm ne uh, it's not my strength. Because I like I always think, you know what it is? Because I will still forget you're not in my head. <laughs> I still have that child childish <laughs> thing that yes. five year olds have. Oh well, of course you know this. I I I know it, so you must know. I, yeah, you. Uh, when you're married for a long time, you'll do that to your spouse. You will start having a follow up conversation, and realize you didn't have the first conversation. <laughs> like, oh right, I, this was an imaginary conversation I had with you in my head, and now I'm, I want to see how you feel about that. <laughs> you're like, oh right, I didn't tell you. I think I, I did my cool idea for an invention. <laughs> did the right thing. You were never going to get there. And just me going, okay, all the same was just getting, come on. They're all, <laughs> they're all the same. Well, I got a little trivia. All right, do it. Based on uh, this, is just Billy Joel's claim. Um, the album Nylon Curtain. He says is based on an album that he loved growing up, based on another album. Oh. The concept. Can you imagine what album it might be? Nylon Curtain is based on. We know, we know who Billy Joel loved. Yeah. It ain't gonna be Sergeant Peppers. There's just Sergeant Peppers. It is. Right. Wow. Here's a follow-up question. How wrong is he about <laughs> that? <laughs> I don't know. Certainly there are like massive differences because obviously Nylon Curtain isn't about a, a different piano player. Right. <laughs> that he pretends to be. But musically, there's a lot of the same kinds of sounds. Okay. If you listen to the song Scandinavian Skies and tell me it's not a weird Beatles song. Yeah. The, so, okay. I buy that logic to a point, but... Then, yeah, I don't think it maps onto it 100%. Because at that point, then you could just say, well, it's like a Beatles album. Because Sgt. Pepper is so super specific. It's all the... The songs are linked together, although John Lennon would say they're not. Um, <laughs> it's also a little bit crazy to say that, you know, oh, this album's kind of based on Sgt. Pepper's because of the way Sgt. Pepper's changed what albums are. And so they're all a little bit based on Sgt. Pepper's now. Yeah, that's true. You know, it's like uh, saying that, oh, this movie is based on the Great Train Robbery. <laughs> Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yes. In that did. you went and filmed it and it people pass out when they see the train. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's uh that's a good bit of trivia. I I guessed it in believing that it couldn't possibly be because I was like, is eh? okay. Yeah. I love yeah, I mean, oh, that's what you think. That's fine, Mr. Joel. That's fine. I think sonically there's some overlap or he stole some stuff from it. Yeah. Um, it almost feels like it's exactly. yeah. 
So we just stole some stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. All right. That's how the Rolling Stones are based on Chuck Berry. Well, no. Um, yeah. Yeah. In the, in if the we do done... that, they went ahead and became unpleasant people, too. <laughs> right. So it happens when you don't die in a plane crash at 27. Yeah, fair enough. You turn terrible. You get ablations. Yep. Have we done I Got a Friend? I don't think so. No, we have not. From the, uh, the standalone single written for a children's album. So it's not on a uh, main album. It's not on a studio album. Great. That's nice. Yeah. Um, it's a fun uh, little song. Sometime in the future, I want to do another bottle episode because of Diana Crawl. And the bottle <laughs> episode will just be um, we'll each go over some of our favorite weird Billy Joel covers or covers by other people of weirdly covering Billy Joel. Fantastic. She does one, and it's, I don't think it's good or bad. It just exists. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would go for that. Which is the way people describe me. Weird, but different. It's, it exists. 